pretty much lived nearby to the Santa Fe River our entire lives. And we've watched it change quite a bit during our lifetimes. Um, we used to spend a lot of time down here at the river swimming and rafting and inner tubing um, all throughout the summer and we'd come down and spend a lot of time down here and we've just watched it get progressively drier have come to learn that that's in part because of drought and also because of the kind of what they choose to do with the water I was born in this house right here uh, which is just at the start of Alto Street here in downtown Santa Fe and my mother loves to tell the story about how both of her boys were born on rivers when they were flooding and the Santa Fe River was very high um, the day I was born um, February 29th I'm a leap day baby so I don't get birthdays that often In 2014, we became a steward of the Santa Fe River um, with the Santa Fe Watershed Association. And uh, it was really quite uh, interesting and uh, exciting that one of the stretch that's, stretches that was up for adoption is the stretch that, um, that my brother and I used to play in when we were children. My name is Joe Stodrell and I'm here in the Santa Fe River and I want to show you how to make an eco brick which is a container of some sort, in this case a plastic bottle and it's stuffed full of all sorts of waste plastic materials, non-biodegradables, anything that would persist in the environment and become some type of toxic issue. So here is some uh, waste plastic that I have located in the Santa Fe River and all I'm gonna do is just stuff it into the bottle and layer it layer by layer um, with all sorts of these things. Trying not to disperse any of these materials anymore throughout the river. Using a stick or a rod of some sort if need be um, and definitely with a bottle like this, you have to use a rod of some sort in order to compress it fully. And pretty much we're just going to layer this bottle layer by layer and compress it at every point until it is a densely packed uh, bottle full of waste, plastics and such. Um, and the bottle should be so densely stuffed that you can pretty much stand on it with little deformity should be very solid. So that's how to make an eco brick. I don't have a cap to put on this bottle. I didn't bring one, uh, but you of course seal off the bottle once you're done with it. And then you use it as an alternative building material and uh, construction of some sort. This is kind of the, the round to the, the eco brick 2.0 that we've been working on and developing, which is uh, using a milk carton or aseptic container instead of a plastic bottle and this really cuts back on the amount of time that's needed to stuff an eco brick. This is one of the first generation Ubuntu blocks which is uh, this is waste styrofoam that has been compressed it's it's the, the styrofoam has been broken apart, it's been bagged, and then it's been put in uh, these Ubuntu block presses, one of which we've made now. Then it's been compressed with a leverage system, and then it's been tied off. And this There's definitely treasures out there to be found, and not just trash. And even the trash, really a lot of the work that we're doing is actually to show that Anything that we pull out of the, the river and label as trash can actually be used somehow in productive ways. So we're making eco bricks with the plastics and with old clothes and nylon. And um, really one of the things I'm really getting excited about is to propose this project to the, to the watershed association that we could actually be building things um, as in community structures and benches along the river 
with the trash that we pull out of the river. And it's, uh, it's not as difficult as it sounds really. It's just about containing these things and then, um, and then using a variety of building methods to, to make uh, works of art out of them basically. So, so um, yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of hidden treasures throughout the river for sure.